Welcome to Electron Align. In this example, we're going to find the maximum and minimum values of this function, but only in the interval from minus 3 to 2, and of course, since we use the brackets, it includes those two values. What that usually requires us to do is not only find the, the local max and mins based upon the equation, but also the values, the function values, evaluated at minus 3 and 2, the endpoints in the interval, to make sure that those are not higher or lower than the minimum or maximum that we found. Okay, so we still go through the same process before until the very end. You'll see the difference in a moment. So first of all, we're going to find the derivative of this. So f prime of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 8x. And then we're going to set that equal to 0 to find the max and mins on the equation. So set f prime of x equal to 0. I always like to write that because we know it is not equal to 0, we just set it equal to 0 to find the max and min. So now we set the derivative equal to 0 and solve that for the values of x. So 4x cubed minus 8x equals 0. And now we solve this equation for x. Those are the x values or the x coordinates of the points where we find max and mins. Okay, first we can divide both sides by 4 to simplify this. So this becomes x cubed minus 2x equals 0. We can now factor out an x. x times x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. And since now we have two things multiplied together, the x and the quantity x squared minus 2, the result is 0. That means either one or the other must be 0, which means x equals 0, or the quantity x squared minus 2 equals 0, which means x squared equals 2, or x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. So there's three possible values, or I shouldn't say three possible, there's actually three values, x equals 0, x equals plus the square root of 2, and x equals minus the square root of 2, where we'll find a max or a minimum value. Okay, um, well, actually I should give you one hint, sometimes it's not actually a max or minimum value. The slope there may be zero, but it may be an inflection point, and we'll see that case in some future, in some future videos. Anyway, assuming that these are the three uh, max and min values, let's see what this equation now will look like. So to find out the corresponding y values, you want to plug those values back in the original equation. So we have f of x equals zero. So we plug in zeros for x, and we'll end up just with that's equal to 2 because there'll be 0 plus 0 plus 2. f of x equal the positive square root of 2 is equal to, let's plug those in, so we have the square root of 2 to the fourth power minus 4 times the square root of 2 squared plus 2. So that would be uh, 2 squared, that would be 4, so this is equal to uh, 4 minus 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 2. That would be minus a plus, that would be uh, minus 2. And then we do the same thing for x equals minus the square root of 2. And since, of course, this is to the fourth power, to the second power, the negative doesn't make any difference. We'll probably get the exact same value. Actually, we will get the exact same value. Notice this, minus 4 times the negative square root of 2 squared plus 2. So indeed, this is also equal to um, negative 2. There we go. So now we have the three points where we know the slope is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and graph that. So we have the y-axis, we have the x-axis. The first point is when x is equal to zero, y is equal to two. So that would be one, two, this is the point right there. We know the slope there is equal to zero, that's one of them. The second one is when x is equal to square root of two, y is equal to negative two. So there would be one, two, this would be the square root of two and negative 1, negative 2, so right about there, we know that the slope is 0 there as well. And then, if x is equal to negative the square root of 2, we know that y is also equal to negative 2. So negative 1, negative 2, right there, and so that would be another point right there. And so the three points are, uh, here this is equal to 0, 2, this point is equal to the square root of 2, comma, negative 2, and this would be negative the square root of 2, comma, negative 2. All right, those are the three critical points, as we call them, where the slope is zero. It doesn't really yet quite reveal what the equation looks like. We could probably take some guesses. It probably looks something like this, but we'll see in just a moment. A little hint is anytime we have an x to the fourth equation, it typically kind of looks like a w. But now what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the function for the endpoints because those may be higher or lower than the max and min values that we found here. Those will then become the local max and min values, maybe the absolute. 
and we'll find out what the endpoints signify. So now we're going to evaluate f when x is equal to negative 3. So that becomes negative 3 to the fourth power minus 4 times negative 3 squared plus 2. This is 81. This is 9 times 4, which is 36, with the minus is minus 36 plus 2. 81 minus 36, that would be uh, 45 plus 2, which is 47. So when x equals negative 3, y is 47. So negative 3 is right over here, and 47 is way up there. I can't draw it quite that high, so I'll just go ahead and take some point right there. So there's the end point of our interval at negative x equal negative 3, and when we evaluate f of x equals the right point on the interval, we get 2 to the fourth power minus 4 times 2 squared plus 2, so that would be 16, minus 16 plus 2, so that would be equal to 2, so when x equals 2, y equals 2. So coming back over here, when x equals 2, y equals 2, which is that point right there, which is the end point at this location, 2 comma 2. And now that we have five points on the graph, it's fairly easy to graph the equation. So now it looks something like this. It comes down here. Oop. We have a minimum value. Here we have a maximum value. Here we have a minimum value. And that comes back over here. And so that's the interval from minus 3 to 2 for that function. And now we can find the maximum and minimum points. First of all, this is an absolute max. Absolute max, because it's the highest point on the interval. Notice we have two absolute minimum points. These have the same minimum value. So these points are absolute mins. Oop, absolute min, what I'm trying to write here. So that's for this point and this point. And these two points right here, those are neither maximum nor minimum values, so we can just leave those alone. If we had not considered, um, I guess you, could, you can call this a, a local maximum and call this a local maximum, so these two, two points could be considered what we call local maximum values. They're not the absolute highest value, but in their vicinity, they're the highest value of that function in that particular region, so let's call those local max. And that's how we evaluate a function over an interval you can see that in case you have been given an interval, you also have to account for what these endpoints uh, give you as far as the value for the function to see if you have an absolute max or an absolute min at those locations. And that's how we do that.